Hi. Hello, Stan. Hi, how, how, how are you, boy? All right, thanks. How are you getting along? What in the world have you got there, Stan? Well, I got a little bit of film here for shooting this wait, afternoon. Wait, 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 wait. Are you from Columbia? Yeah, work with the South Carolina Arts Make Commission. Fun? I work with the Arts Commission down in Columbia. I, I, as, boy, he told me that you're dead. I've got some. I've got some mighty good friends in, in Columbia. Is that right? Yeah. Do, do you know uh, W.D. W.D. Workman? Yes, I do. With a newspaper. Yeah, he's yeah. a. Yeah. I, I think he's. He's a, a Republican. How's that? He's a Republican. Yeah, he's why, why he's one of those damned animals. <laughs> I, 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 I am too. I, Are you a Republican? Oh, I vote for one and then the other. Is that right? It, it, it doesn't matter. Who'd you vote for this time? Jimmy Carter. Oh, you did? Well, that's yeah, sure. good. I voted for him too. That was <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. I voted for Jimmy, and I wrote him. Yeah? yeah I, I wrote him and sent him five dollars, and I said, Jimmy, I want you to send me some peanuts, and. Uh, and, 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 and your picture. And what did he do? I never heard from him. He, did, he never even responded? No, I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear from him. I, I've been do, do, doing a lot of, of, uh, uh, of traveling lately. Yeah. I've been to Memphis, Tennessee, and and, and been Raleigh. Yeah. And I've got to go back to Raleigh. What do you do when you travel? What, what do you do? I talk on Tom. Oh, you talk on Tom? Yeah, sure. I see. Yeah. Uh, I've got some very interesting things in, in here I, I want to show you. Well, I'm really glad I'm, I want to see them, but I think what's interesting is to hear you start talking on Fred. Uh, on what? On Fred. On Fred? <laughs> uh, well, he's not worth a dead uh, uh, damn. Well, damn not, damn. Uh, that, that, that's not what I've seen in the footage I've seen so huh? far. It looks pretty good to me. Uh, come, come in here, by God, it you. And, and, and drink some Coca-Cola. I'd love you? some Coca-Cola, and huh? we can talk about some other some other stuff. How 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 you like to have a little drink? Well, are you a drinking man? Huh? <clears throat> are you a drinking man? Yeah, sure. I'll well, I'm good. a drinking man. That sounds uh, real good. On okay, that sounds good. What do you think about him making this film? Here? Huh? After his wife's death, I used to meet him frequently at the Simple Simon restaurant. Because he'd come up there every day or every night. And when, they, when he would come to Simple Simon's restaurant, everybody knew him. Huh? He'd come in there with a kind of big boy's friend and say, Well, here's Mr. Wolf. And Mr. Wolf, yes, yeah, sure, I'm going to get it. Now, you know what I want. He'd speak to the waitress, and he, she'd always know about what he wanted, you know, and, and fix him up. But one night, as I say, he came to the Simple Simon to get his uh, dinner, and uh, the policeman saw him weaving all across the road. My right front tire blew, blew out with a, with a cut that long. After you uh, been, you got been sat down in the Simple Simon, the policeman went up to him and says, uh, uh, Mr. Wolf says, uh, I notice uh, you're not sick, are you? I notice you kind of weaving up and down the roadway, and uh, you shouldn't be driving like that. said, maybe I better follow you home. Oh, no, no, I, I'm all right. I can go home. Um, I can go home all right. I can go home all right. It, it wasn't uh, two weeks after that until the highway department wrote me from Columbia that uh, I'd, I'd have to go out to the highway department and and, 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 and take what was the test. I went out and I failed it. That was the end of his driving license days. I think he was allowed to told him he couldn't drive anymore. Frank might be able to say something about that. I don't know. <laughs> Fred Tall? Yeah. You want you want to have a conversation of five or ten minutes before you jump off to you you ever know my brother Tom. You ever know my brother Thomas. And of course then that changed all the everything so far as he was concerned because he wanted to he was so proud of Thomas W. Wolf that he forgot that he was afraid of W. Wolf. But he didn't talk much about himself. Not we, too much of himself. We found it hard to get him to talk too much about himself. It, it is very hard. He won't do it unless well, if you just could get him still long enough and uh, keep him down, you would get lots of information from him. But he's, he's always up and going and says, well, I believe that's enough. I believe that's enough. Now, you stop, so you might as well give up when he says, I believe that's enough. He's not going to talk to you anymore. It kind of <laughs> makes it hard to do a film about it him. It does. Though. Yes, it does. It sure does. What did you feel when you saw the first automobile? Huh? What, how did you feel when you saw the first automobile driving down the road? Uh, I, I wanted one. 
Uh, uh, before the ball, ball one, go, 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 go over there and look at that damn picture. Okay. Did, did you ever see it? Uh-huh. Uh, Cali, Califine made it. Go, 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 go over there, there, there right now and look at it. Okay, give me a flash watch. Huh? Give me a flash watch. Is this the first car you drove, or what? Tell me about that. Well, that's what it was, it was a model, model T Ford. Every, everything was brass. It was, but you had to crank it. See the crank? Yeah. Uh, well, you, well, you're not old, old enough to have ever seen one. It, 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 it was magneto ignition upon the dashboard. Yeah. You, you see, well, well, you'd turn on the ignition, and, and then you'd crank. And if you put your finger upon that box, it, it would knock hell out of it. And uh, there was more, more broken, broken arms between 1905 and, 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 and 1915 in, in the United States. But, but that was the Ford right there. And, and, and this is Mama, this is Papa. And, it, and after I went to Georgia Tech, uh, my mother sold it to a, oh, some fellow out in West Asheville. She traded off to him well, for three lots, and she sold those lots, well, for $1,000 a piece. So she got back $3,000, I guess, well, for the $1,500 that he paid for, well, for the car. I guess you boys know that his mother ran a rooming and boarding house in the city of Asheville uh, for years and years to get those boys educated. And it's a shrine up there now. It's a lovely old home. Well, you know, I talk upon Tom. Well, 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 they asked me, they said, Fred, well, you talked for an hour and 15 minutes and you fielded questions for 45. That's two hours. Well, I said, you can turn me on, but you can't, can't turn me on. I said, after, after all, I said, Tom, Tom Wolf is a, 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 a pretty big subject. And he is. Now, the one thing everybody likes to ask Fred Wolf is, how do you think you came out in Look Homeward Angel as Luke Gant? And Fred, for many years, always used to say, that, well... Well, I said, Tom said I didn't have any sense, but I said, I think that he put me on the map well, when he wrote, wrote about me in Look Homeward Angel. I think Tom put me on the map all right. Nobody would ever have heard of me, but he, he pictured me as the village idiot, the clown, the fool. But I think he's finally learned that... Uh, uh, he wasn't pictured as the village idiot. I mean, if you've got a passage in a book that refers to Luke the Unique, Luke the Incomparable, uh, that's not making you the village idiot. But if you read carefully all the parts of Look Homeward Angel that deal just with Fred Wolf, Luke Gann, you'll find, I think, that Tom really admired his brother for being the outgoing type and really liking everybody that Tom Wolf was not and couldn't be. There's a great, a great deal of admiration comes through. Of course, Thomas Wolf, being the famous novelist that he is, needs no, uh, no special help. But Fred has certainly uh, been a great man for the cause because everybody likes him. He's very friendly, and I've seen him sit down and autograph and autograph and autograph when I know it was worn out. Now, what is your name, buddy? Carrie. Who? Carrie. C-A-R-R-I-E. Carrie or Terry? Carrie. C. C? Uh-huh. C or C? C, like cat. They asked me how it feels to be Tom's brother. I says, I'm damn proud of it. I says, I, I, uh, you wouldn't be asking me that question if Tom hadn't put me on the map. I said, he did. And he did. Yes, a friend and I went by to see him one afternoon thinking, you know, that he was lonely and would enjoy company because he does love people. And we found out that he just does his own thing while his company is there. Right in the middle of our visit, he mentioned something about a letter. And uh, he disappeared and didn't come back. So we started looking around and went in the kitchen and there he sat at the kitchen table. The kitchen table was piled high with papers and all kind of things. 
uh, ashtray with cigarettes just all over the place, and he was writing a letter, <laughs> completely unconcerned about the fact that he had company. Well, we got a kick out of that. We're going down there. I hear almost everybody's out on the field. And let's take a look at this again. This is, a, this is an excellent kick. Wait a minute. Where is this stuff coming down here? An excellent kick by Jolly. Once again, they went to work on Mario Park over here. Make a good reception. Did you get it? They take this out. Yeah, he's got it. Baltimore and Equid, Baltimore and I'm not playing. I'm going to get that. But you know, Thomas Wolfe had Fred Wolfe down exactly right. If you know him in Chapter 10 in Look Home with Angel, that's Fred. No doubt about it. Well, you know, I think he's actually become Luke. I will soon be there. So give my regards to dear old Broadway and tell us I'll be there. Now this out of gas. <laughs> I suppose there are a number of very interesting elderly gentlemen in this world, but none happens uh, to be the brother of one of America's greatest novelists and also a character in what I think is uh, the great American novel. You can't take pictures, can you? Yeah. Come over here. He's going to take a picture. Mountain Grill. Oh, the old Mountain Grill. My old Mountain Grill. Oh, he can't get pictures. I tell you, Fred, you're a fine man and a wonderful friend, but you're one hell of a singer. Well, you sang with Caruso. It looks like something should have rubbed off. But I think the, the funny thing about, about Fred is, is the little ritual he's going to go through with. Every time I've ever been over there, he's got to do all his errands after I get there. Well, then that, that throws you late for wherever you're going, you know. Well, he, well he's going to go, and, he, he, you know, he got to, he got, you've got to take him out and let him get his dry cleaning. He's got to go to the post office. Then if he hadn't finished writing all his cards, he's going to stand in there and write those cards. That's it. <laughs> Coming back, he's got to stop by that drugstore. And he's going to mess around in and get a lot of cards and things like that and buy a terrific amount of candy. Well, after that, took one look at me at Georgia Tech about six years ago. Tech was just a, a young school, and it took me ten, 10 years to finish it, so they took one well, look at me and they said, boys, write the song. Uh, it, it, it'll, it'll be a marching song. And this was it. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a hell of an engineer. A hell of 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 an engineer. Like all the jolly fellows, I drink my whiskey clear. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a hell of an engineer. That's all I had. Oh, I wish I had a barrel of rum and sugar 300 pounds, a cottage bell to put it in, and a clapper to stir it round. I drink to everybody, all the fellows before and dear, cause I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. And I have a good end to
have a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a hell of an engineer. A hell of 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 an engineer. Like all the jolly fellows, I drink my whiskey clear and I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a hell of an engineer. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> Seventy-five dollars for the suit. Seventy-five for the suit. Yeah. That, that ain't bad. Would you like pants with pleats on them yeah. like this? You used to uh -huh. wear them like that. Do, do you have to have a run a little darker? I doubt it. See, for for the summertime, it's all light. Now we'll have fall ones in later. I, I want some summertime way Well, this now. is it. Go, go over and look in the glass. Okay. Shall I, shall I take this off? Yeah. Thank you. He's always uh, had a kind of a unruly head of hair, and uh, he likes the old style haircuts, clipped close around the bottom and leave the top kind of natural, you know, just like the long letter kind of fall wherever it may. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> now give him a little salute there, Mr. Ford. Well, sir, I'm going to out, out, out with you. I don't know how. <laughs> He's a sort of a humorous type individual anyway, any way you take him or you talk with him. Uh, he's uh, got a lot of wit, and he's a real kind-hearted old gentleman, even though you might not think he is to, just to see him or hear him. But deep down, he's a real, he's a real tender-hearted old gentleman. And I think a lot of him. Uh, it's like the old saying that uh, one never know how him look until him have him picture took. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> See how you look. <laughs> you see what they got. I got your hair fixed up here. Look at uh, I, I've got a little left. <laughs> you, you, you'll be, you'll... I'm gonna get you over here right now. Okay. <laughs> what well, you say when, son? Okay. Uh, are you ready? Okay, that's ready. Uh -huh. Down, down the hatch. Okay. Down with the periscope. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> how you doing there, Miss Wolf? Well, I'm still here, well, you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Mr. Wolf. It sure stimulates you. Activities don't, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> don't this stimulate your activities a little? That's on this side here, you go. Right. Okay. He likes to come to the barbershop, and he likes to spend a good bit of time at the barbershop, and uh, I, I think he really enjoys it. He's a real fine person, and he has a, a real knack for chatter, you know, and he likes to talk with people he never never meets a stranger, no for it. And just anybody he sees his friend, and he can talk for an hour with anybody on anything just about that you want to talk with, but he does, uh, he does love to come to the barbershop. You get over and comb it out. I found out one thing in life, and I've lived a long time, and that's this. If you're okay at heart, the people will, will receive you, and they're gonna treat you okay. If you're no good, while well, you're a bum, and they're going, going to treat you accordingly. No, I think I've been treated, treated very, very nice. my own grave now. Fred William Wolf, July the 15th, 1894. Uh, some of the month and some of, some, some of the year, I don't know when. And that'll be at Luke of Look Over the Angel.
Mary, Mary Burris Wolf, born April the 15th, 1916, died June the 20th, 1974, in memory of my beloved wife, Mary. Right where she would be uh, 59 years old, two weeks from today. So that would be it. Two weeks from today. Well, she died on the 20th of, of June, 1974. I carried her up to Asheville. We, we went to the mortuary. We'd already had a service here, and, and we had one at, at the Williams Funeral Home, and then we drove out to Riverside Cemetery, a, a beautiful spot, and we had another service there. And, and the Paul Paul bears were the carried Mary's casket up, up over the grave, and before I'd let them lower that casket into the ground. I said, take the top off that casket. And I said, well, Fred, it's rather unusual, but if you want it done, we'll do it. I said, please, take it off. So they took it off, and I I, I, I stood there, and I looked at, 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 at Mary, and I, and, 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 and I got down side of the casket, and I, and, and I kissed her goodbye. And every time I go, I, I think of that. Uh, well, 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 that's a lonely feeling. But well, 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 to know that you're alone. Tom, Tom told, told me that his, his spirits would soar like a pendulum. That, that when it came over to the left, that, 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 that he would be up in ecstasy. When, when that pendulum swung back over, he was in the depths of, of despair. He said, life is made up of hope, ecstasy, and, 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 and despair. He, he, he's got that in one of his books. I don't, I don't know which one. We're kind of interested in finding a little bit more out about Fred Wolf, since uh, most people always come along and ask you questions well, about Tom Wolf. Well, it won't take you long to find uh, five, 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 find out, out, out about me. Um, if, uh, you, uh, well, you read uh, Look Home at Angel, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Well, I, I, I'm the only one left. Is that right? Yes, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Luke. You're Luke? Oh, sure. That's great. Well, come in, boy. Yeah, I'm so fine. Remember me to her. 